Aha! Good morning, my hearties. There you all are. How lovely to be back with you. It's 10 o'clock sharp in the morning, and nothing gets past me. And McClue has joined you to say dinky-doo to every single one of you. It's uh, live on Facebook Live. I'm the world's top broadcaster, the first lord of the internet, and the world's most humble man. Gordon Robertson says hi. Gordon, you are first on this morning. How good is that, you clever, clever man? <laughs> Kevin Stewart's watching Dinky Doo, and uh, lovely to have you with us. Kareem Zakaria, you are second on. Excellent. Welcome, 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 I say. Well, I'm saying second on, but then you see, perhaps somebody comes on and doesn't make a comment. Kevin Stewart, good morning. Scotty McClue, good morning. Kevin Dinky Doo, Scotty McClue, Dinky Doo to you. Lovely to have you with us. And uh, good morning, sir. Dinky Doo, says John Boyle. Good morning, John. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Larry has just joined us. Larry Donaldson. Welcome, Larry. Was I first this morning? Oh, Gordon Robertson, you were first. I don't think there's any doubt about that. That has been proven beyond all reasonable doubt. I promise to try and interact more today. Ah, Kareem, not at all. It depends how you're feeling. The thing about this show, and I was having a long chat to a friend of mine yesterday. There's the lovely Margaret Sheldon. Good morning, Scotty, on this lovely sunny morning. I hope you are well. Mwah! And a kiss. Good morning to you, Margaret Sheldon. I hope you are well, and you're very, very welcome. David Distance just joined us. Dinky doo, David. I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday about all this, and I was explaining how it's totally different from the old Scotty McClue shows. And, um, you know, everybody is welcome. There is no pressure. That was a long time ago. It's 25 years. Dinky do, Scotty. Top of the morning to you. The wonderful Kenny Hyde has just joined us. What Kenny doesn't know about cars isn't worth knowing. A very, very clever man. There we are. Dinky do, Scotty, says Jack. Good morning. Good morning, Scotty, says the lovely Susan Forrest. And a big kiss. Thomas Peden, what's in the cars today, Scotty? Good man, Thomas. I appreciate you coming on there. Um, John Marshall, Thomas is getting John Marshall up. We're discussing pets today. I posted a picture of Lord Reith, my old Labrador, last night, and everybody has gone bananas berserk for it. And I captioned it. Did you just say something about a walk? You know, he's got this look in his face. What? And I think it was that. He was up at the window in the house in East Lothian, uh, which, of course, was farmland. And uh, he must have seen something. I think I said to him, you go for a walk, Reithy? What? And he just looks amazing. So there we are. It's Shakespeare's birthday. So I believe I have posted that. I got a reminder from several years ago about Shakespeare's birthday. And of course, we need to thank old Shakespeare for all the sayings he gave us. Oh, I'm much ado about nothing. So there we are. Can we shout out Craig Minty again? He's busy working at Tesco, so he can't join us this morning. Finley Morris, of course we can. We can shout out all these lovely people and thank them. I popped up to the supermarket last night, and I popped up just before closing. I don't want you all doing this, by the way. And I was the only person in the shop. It was fantastic. I got the run of the place, and there were all these arrows and barriers and everything. And uh, I was able just to walk in, get a little bit of shopping, just bread and milk, really, and push off again. I'm happy now for seeing your wee cheery face this morning. Absolutely. And a very happy St. George's Day to everyone. So there you are. I've got on my St. George's tie. See? Very special. Uh, good morning, Sir Scotty. Good morning, Sir Mark. Sir Mark Kelsey has just joined us. Very, very welcome. Anyway, long story short, long discussion with a very good friend of mine yesterday. And we were talking about the Scotty McClue thing. And I was saying that we used to have hundreds of thousands joining us and in smaller numbers. Now, a lot of this is to do with the actual platform because you don't all get to see it. So people seeing it go, oh, there's Scotty McClue. Other people seeing it, don't. So that was the thing. I was beginning to wonder 
if it was me. And uh, the wonderful Gordon Sterling last night said, you've peaked. And I said, well, you must have peaked too, or you wouldn't have seen me. So that was him. But I don't think we have. I think it's to do with the platform. So there you go. Uh, I've seen Scotty, that lovely dog. I've got a small patter jack called Fia. Thomas Peden. Lovely, lovely characters. A wee patter jack, a patter dale, and a Jack Russell. And they are fabulous, especially if you just spoil them and love them. You know, that sort of stuff. I've ruined two beautiful gun dogs by just hugging them. <laughs> and when you meet gamekeepers, you go, you're ruining the dog. I say, yes, I am. Yes, that's what I'm doing, ruining the dog. Would you like another wee biscuit? <laughs> that's to the gamekeeper. Uh, good morning, Scotty. This is Ian, Ian Reed. Good morning, Ian. Lovely to have you with us. And dinky-doo, a warm welcome. So funny, Wendy got me to go to Scotland to, to wear one on St. George's Day. Derek Walker, I think you've been done in by the predictive text there. Check that and send me back some sense. Kareem says, I think since lockdown, dogs' fitness levels have improved. Everyone's out walking them. Yes, absolutely. But not to the parks, am I right in thinking? What do you get when you cross a sheepdog with a rose, says Kevin Stewart. A cauliflower. Woo! <clears throat> Don't worry about the cough. Had it for uh, 20 years. Now, tell me this. You didn't answer me last week. What do you get when you cross a mute owl and a skunk? All right, a mute owl and a skunk. Guys, we need to get shaving. Shaving. We need to get shaving. Ha <laughs> ha. Need to get sharing big time. So there we go. Share, share, share. And uh, what am I doing here? We need to share, share, share. Get this going out there into your news feeds. Alistair King's watching. Good morning, Alistair. <coughs> Finley Morris is getting Michael Farker up. Dinky do. If everybody could put somebody they know on Facebook in a line. Hiwa Hamadaman is watching. Hiwa. What a fabulous name. Where are you watching from? Let me know. Hiwa Hamadaman. Lovely, lovely name. Morning, Scotty Dinky. Good morning, Alistair. I hope you're well. Uh, Gone Ron says, Scotty will probably delete this. His windies were filthy. Lord Wreath could hardly see out the windies. Now, I told you, Gordon Robertson, two things. I said most people, I thought, would be looking at the dog. I made a video of a fox that visits me one night. And all somebody could say is, your slabs need power washing. A fox. So I thought maybe you'd look at the dog, you know, that sort of thing. And we don't comment. It's not gent to comment on people's windies. That's very kind of, um, what can we say? Um, oh, it's very kind of, uh, it's a wee bit rook. Do you know, that stuff. I mean, I remember being invited into an aristocrat's house, a massive old country house come back. For, I never said, this place is filthy. <laughs> you know, it's like Trump. Did he not say the White House was a dump? And he went in there. Uh, Nigel Turner's watching John Jones. Dinky do. Instead of saying, I'm the luckiest man in the world to be allowed into the White House. Alan Hall, thank you do. Hello, Scotty, says Erin Foy. Somebody's got Erin up. Excellent. Well done. Welcome, Erin. Lovely to have you with us. I went to Slothello. So I think that would be to see Othello, a long, slow play which took all my willpower to sit through it. Very good, Kevin. Check out if you meant Othello. My dog's still in bed, fast asleep. He doesn't like getting up in the morning. Do you know, Alistair, it's quite funny. As dogs get older, when they're younger, they sort of bound up right away as soon as they hear you. But you can actually go into the kitchen and put the kettle on, and the dog's giving it, oh, is that you? All that. Quite funny. Kevin Stewart, you've peaked. It's the hat. I know. I've peaked. Because I did say to you, I'll stop doing the pop-ups when you've all had enough. But I don't want you saying you've had enough when you haven't. Do you know, that sort of stuff. It's like people used to phone me when I did the radio phone-ins and they would say, this could be a great program if they got a decent presenter. 
Scotty, you need to get the deck chairs out and get a wee tan. I've got a wee tan. If I want a tan, John, all I do is put my hand up to the camera. Watch my face. See? You see my tan? <laughs> Isn't that lovely? And I got a lovely tan. So all you need to do is put your hand up to the camera. Marcella Foy, I hope you're up and tuning in. Um, so there we are. There's Erin getting Marcella up. Come on, Marcella. Up we get. Paddy O'Rourke's watching. Welcome, Paddy. Dinky do, sir. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, there's no excuse to miss this. It's essential lockdown. Yes, essential viewing. It should be compulsory. So there we are. We should actually say you must, you must stay home. You must stay safe, and you must watch Scotty McClue. Hashtag Scotty McClue. Dinky do. Yes, absolutely essential lockdown viewing. Put off your tellies and your radios. I have to say, guys, I don't know if it's just me, but I'm getting a bit short with some of the telly now. If it's all about sadness and glumness and death. They're talking, they're saying, uh, if this goes on, which it will go on, we may as well prepare ourselves. If the lockdown goes on, they're saying we're going to end up with a, a lot of mental illness, people locked down. Now, I understand that because remember, mental illness is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of staying strong for far too long. That's virtually what a lot of it happens. If people haven't had an early history of mental illness, they've very often stayed strong for too long and something's just gone pop when they think, I can't handle this. Can he cope? There's a friend of mine from Dundee who say, I'm here now, nervous, block doing so that sort of stuff. And he used to come out with that now. I think it was taking an nervous block doing. I'm going to take a nervous block doing if you don't uh, uh, get that finished. That sort of stuff. Now, what I'm thinking here is very important. Ration yourself to all the negativity because, of course, we're going to have mental problems and people still pump out all that negativity. Pictures of death, pictures of coffins. We get it. We know to stay in. We know to self-isolate. We know to, to self-distance. We know to only nip to the shops if we really need our, uh, you know, essential supplies. And we, we social distance there. We know all that. So we need to now think about how balanced are the broadcasters? Are we getting some of the old comedy movies to make us feel a lot better? Because the purpose of me popping up is certainly not to pull any of you down. It's to let you know that you're far better built up as you. So there you go. That's it. Rant over my clue. I need to share. You all need to share, guys. We must share, share, share. Never ever miss a second of Scotty McClure or you miss a moment of life, right? So there's no excuse, Sarah, and you're quite right. Craig Minty's joined us for a bit, Scotty. Hey, well done, Craig. Welcome, welcome. Maggie McInnes is watching. Lovely name, Maggie. I do like it. You're a top lady. Lovely to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. Paul Hunter, hoping you're tuning in, Dan. Good man, Thomas Peden, Robert Rovers, Kevin Stewart. Uh, now, Kevin is answering my um, question. What do you get if you cross a mute owl with a skunk? And his answer is a smelly hooter. Um, no, not quite. So there you go. Try again. Michael McLeish, a monk. You don't get a monk. No, no, you don't get a monk. Uh, do you mean if you cross a mutile with a skunk? A monk? Oh, I see what you're getting. A monk. Very good. I remember going to a little English village and um, the chip shop was run by the local monks from the abbey. And I went in and I said to one of them, I said, excuse me, are you the chip monk? And he said, no, I'm actually the friar. So there we go. Um, Jim Hiddleston, people are going, ah, that's old Scotty. Morning, Scotty, dinky do. Morning, Michael Farker. Lovely to have you with us. Jim Hiddleston's joined us. Welcome, Jim. No, I meant slothello, as sloths are very slow movers. 
Kevin Stewart, yes, you're just, you're actually a floor up from the rest of us, aren't you? Yes, very good. Your lift goes all the way to the top story. There we are. You're um, an extra spanner in the toolbox. <coughs> you're an extra sandwich in the picnic basket. There we go. A guy goes on an antique roadshow with two stuffed dogs. Expert says these are rare Victorian examples of taxidermy. If they were in better condition, do you know what they would fetch? And the guy says, sticks. <laughs> Love it, Robert Rovers. This is our kind of humor on here. Good, clean family show. Michael Clark's watching Dinky Do. Scotty, is this another repeat? Gordon Sterling, how often do I have to tell you? I don't do repeats. I do live pop-ups, and you're watching one right now, right? But I will sometimes, for the later risers, do a watch party. That lets them have a bit on catch-up. So, yes, it's the same show, but I wouldn't call it a repeat. I think we save that for broadcasting organizations when we're trying to do them down. They go, oh, it's, it's not repeats, you know. And the people that say, but he shows, are they, these pop-ups, are they not kind of the same? Like, no. You look at our pop-ups, watch all of them again. Every single one has got its own character. Wonderful. Kareem Zachariah says, Scotty McClure, let's hope the public will always have an appetite for your entertainment and professional manner. We appreciate it. Kareem Zachariah, I thank you. It is very much appreciated. And um, Paul Francis Carl is watching, who Skyped us yesterday. Put on the Skype, McClure, and get some Skypers. Yes, Scotty.McClure, guys, if you've got Skype. Scotty Dot McClue, I'm switching it on. Paul Francis Carroll very kindly Skyped yesterday. What a top man. Lovely to have you with us. Thomas Hamilton. Good morning, Scotty. Have a good day, Thomas. You're such a great guy. I thank you guys. We need to share. I'm serious. Share, 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 share. Everybody needs to share. It's all in the sharing. I'm sharing to my story. Uh, this is public by public, public. Right, there we go. Good morning, says uh, Tony Mack. Good morning, Tony. Lovely to have you with us. So I've shared the public. I'm going to share again, guys, and you all need to do the same. These figures need to be up around the 100 mark. Janice Muldoon, good morning, Scotty. Good morning, Janice. Lovely to see you. Chris Kirk's watching. Calvin Allen's watching. Thomas Peden, we need to stay away from the mainstream media. They want us to break and crack up. Scaremongers of the highest order. None of that in the morning, McClure. No, Thomas Peden, we don't need that. This is a show for human beings who understand all the rules and regulations, who are in lockdown and, um, you know, have got something better to do watching Scotty McClure. So there you are. But I realized last night, Gordon Sterling was trying to panic me, saying, I think you've peaked. And I realized it's the platform. Not everybody gets to see it. If the platform said we will put Scotty McClure out to 2 billion people, I can guarantee we'd have 2 billion viewers. So there we are. So that's what it's all about. So if anybody's feeling flush, I know nobody's particularly flush at the moment, and everybody's watching their pennies, but stick a fiver into my paypal.me forward slash Scotty McClue, all one word, and um, I can use it on advertising this show on the platform. And uh, it is money well spent. Billy McKee, dinky do shares this Thomas Hamilton. Thank you, Tom. Brilliant. Wonderful Gordon Roddick has joined us, retired from uh, Scottish television. Uh, one of the first television announcers, <clears throat> and then a fantastic controller, and then uh, a newscaster for BBC Radio Scotland. Wonderful. Um, a man of many, many talents. Gordon, I don't know if you saw it, but I posted the other day an audition I did in 1983 
for newscasting at BBC Radio Scotland. The channel was barely four years old. Um, but for some reason, maybe Providence stepped in for the listeners, and I went to Grampian Television. I've rationed myself down to 25 episodes of Salvage Hunters a week. Gordon Sterling, you will be loving it. You should be on that because you know your stuff. So there you are. How much salvage have you saved? And that was a lovely conversation. We had Gordon Sterling is an expert on buses and uh, must have a PSV license because he drives them. Fantastic. And he's driven route masters and everything, antique buses, modern buses, does them up. Wonderful man. Uh, don't tell him I said that right enough. And um, we were talking last night about my broadcasting, and I said I'd always wanted to be a bus driver. And he was telling me he could see me on McBreen's buses uh, going up the west coast to Fort William. And I thought, yes, with a Gardner diesel engine, doing about, averaging about 30. You can say, oh, that's too slow for the pack. No, no. By the time you do all these roads with your crash gearbox, your double declutching, um, you know, the Gardner chattering, boom, 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 boom. You know, you would... Average, probably about, what, 35, maybe 40? That's a thing. I always remember a bus driver phoned me when we were talking about the gardeners. And he said, Hi, Scotty, the gardener does uh, 25 mile an hour up the hill. I thought, oh, that's good. And she does 25 mile an hour down the hill. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, saying booze sales has gone up dramatically, 300%, and domestic violence. Funny how the human race reacts to this. Think about a lot more depression after this. We just need to watch Blazing Saddles. So not PC nowadays. No Blazing Saddles, that was a cracker, wasn't it? Shout out for Sharon Lindsay and Maggie Minnis, please. Frontline workers in all day. Yes, all day, absolutely, dinky do. Lovely to have you with us. We like all day as well. Alistair King, I can't self-isolate today as I'm on a rescue mission to get shopping for an old friend who is housebound with no family. Does anybody know if you're wanting stuff? Could you phone the supplier, uh, pay on the phone, and get them to dump it at your door? Is that how things are done? Somebody let us know what's going on here. Tony Mac's watching Dinky Do, wonderful top broadcaster. Lovely to have you with us, Tony Mac. Uh, thank you to the lovely people that invited me to join their radio channel yesterday as well. I'll tell you all about that. Can we have marching through Georgia today, Scotty? We might, Finlay. Yes, we'll see. Uh, Gemma and Marie McRae, they're saying that lockdown could last until Christmas. How will we cope? Well, we could start making our Christmas cake now and treating it with brandy. Could we not? Any Christmas cake specialists out there? Any master bakers? Uh, morning, Scotty. Dinky-doo. Dinky-doo, Gemma and Marie McRae. Sandra Wilkin, Paul Francis Carroll, everyone should Skype in. Don't be shy. You've just reminded me, how's the Skype doing? We'll just check that it's fired up. I wonder why I have to keep signing in. That's the only thing. Oh, it's seeing no internet connection. I don't believe that. Yeah, it comes up with this no, no connection detected. I don't believe that. I'll leave that running for a wee bit, guys. We will get there. So there we go. Yes, network connection. Enable the network. We've enabled it. We're on the network, for goodness sake. Um, Alan Warren, Dinky Doo, Stephen Menzies has joined us. Uh, always reminds me of your dad, Liz Ann Campbell. Says, Denise Mendel. Mendel or Mendel? Uh, how do I pronounce? David McIntyre. A shout out to Jason McHugh. Absolutely. Guys, more sharing. Come on. What is going on here? 
I've hardly had time to share. Can we all have a mass share, please? Very, very important we get this right. Here we go. Thank you, do, Scotty McLean. So I was rather relieved. I mean, I didn't think a platform of this size would be, uh, you know, affected by McLean Broadcasting. So it's interesting. It's just who gets to see it. So think yourselves privileged if you can see Scotty McClue. Not everybody can. How do you feel with the virus not seeing friends and family? Thank God to you, Scotty, for entertaining us. I thank you, Gemma and Marie McCree. Yes, it's very tough on everybody. Andy McMillan's watching. Welcome, Andy. Dinky do. Uh, what do you get when you cross a cocker spaniel and a poodle and a rooster? Kevin Stewart. A cocker poodle do ah, You haven't answered me. What do you get when you cross a mutile with a skunk? So there you go. Right, come on. Shared Scotty. Thanks, Gemma Ann. That's fabulous. Gordon Ritchie's watching. Thank you, Gordon. Numpty Heed is watching. Numpty Heed. You, you uh, are a clever, clever man. You should be Skyping McClue. I can't get a network detection here. Did I say anything? Oh, it's still doing all that. Right, I'm going to switch it off and on again then, if that's what's going to go on. And uh, see if we can get it. And get the Skype Numpty Heed. I think you should Skype in. Dinky do. Numpty Heed has been with us, oh, since the start, 25 years. Can you believe it's 25 years since Scotty McClue came to Scotland with the Scotty McClue Nightline? Does anybody remember that? Uh, have you visited the Bus Museum in Brigton? Stephen Menzies, I haven't, is that separate? Yes, because the Transport Museum's in Kelvin Grove now, isn't it? Yes. My father was a bus conductor on the Inverness to White Bridge route before he went into the army. Ah, Kevin Stewart. Is there anybody old enough to have ever heard of the link lines? Uh, my uncle drove a bus for the link lines in 1928. Amazing. 17... My dad, late, was a bus driver. Ah, dear man, give everyone a fishing rod and watch the depression disappear. But I don't know, Alistair, a lot of fishermen might get depressed. I, I go up north past the Spey and I see people standing in the river. So I imagine it's not that deep. It looks deep, but they're standing in there in the waders. And I think, no, standing in the river all day, don't know. I'm a big boat man. But standing in the river all day. The wonderful Thomas Peden says, Andy Sherry doing a home shopping delivery service. If anyone needs it, he'll post a link if he sees this. Excellent, Thomas. You've got us acting now as a network. Everybody should get together on this. We're getting people. The other day I thought, it's very Scottish. But then that will be... The algorithm saying, oh, Scottish, right, so let's find all the Scots. But having said that, um, where, what was I going to say? Oh, yes, then somebody popped up from Australia. We love that. I can never work out what come on gaff meant in the old Glasgow buses. Well, Tony, it's funny you should say that because it was the clippies, um, very often female, very glammed up with a beehive hairstyle, lots of Kirby grips, um, the heels, they wore the heels, very smart in the uniform, the hourglass waist and all that stuff, uh, the blouse out over the top, and uh, they used to go up clicking the old pennies for the fairs. And um, when they went, come on, get off, was to hurry people along. So they would say, come on, as you, oh, come on, for goodness sake, come on to somebody, get off. And of course, because it's a contradiction, you know, it's, uh, you know, come on, get off. It's a paradox. Is that right? Would it be a paradox in the old Glasgow buses? Uh, somebody told me a lovely story of a Saturday night on the Glasgow Corporation bus, the old Orange and Greens. And, um, the conductor came up, now you could smoke upstairs. As far as I know, you didn't smoke downstairs in a bus. So if you wanted to smoke, you went upstairs. And it was a Saturday night, and the pubs would have closed at 
at uh, 10 or maybe just, no, they would close at 10 on a Saturday, I would think. And um, the pubs had closed. It was a litre bus. It was a bucket and wet Glasgow night. So what happens is you had all that misting up in the windows and people with wet coats getting warm on the bus. So they were starting to see. So all the windows were steamed up. You can hardly see a thing. Everybody's smoking. The conductor went up the stairs to get the fares. The bus was packed and he just shook his head and went down again. He thought, no, I'm not even going there. <laughs> it would have taken hours to get, eh, tuppence, please, thanks. People hand them a quid. And all that. <laughs> I've seen in the news in the states across the USA, people are protesting about self-isolation, bringing guns, etc., to these processes. Is this a case of natural selection? Kareem, that is big thinking. I mean, I'd, I'd love the Americans to just give up their guns. It's a silly philosophy nowadays. It's no longer the Wild West. We should get rid of all weapons, you know? Get violins out, you know? Saxophones. And then you'd have to have people say, no, we don't want sax or violins. Um, you can get food stuff delivered to elderly people disabled from the government. No, from elderly people who are disabled from the government. Yes, not disabled from the government. And um, Gemma Ann, absolutely. Michael Wallace, Ian Kerr. Gemma is watching. Ha ha, she's laughing. Of course I remember, Scotty, 25 years. Yes, but these shows are different. I hope people are not staying away from Scotty McClure because they think, oh, no, I'm not getting shouted at and all that. It, they, they are different shows, you know what I mean? Scotty McClure, where were you born, if you don't mind me asking? I don't mind you asking at all, Kareem. Do you want to have a guess? Have a guess, I'll tell you later. Uh, a bird that smells but doesn't give a hoot. I owled with laughter at this. Absolutely. You do. You get a creature that smells but couldn't give a hoot. So a mute owl crossed with a skunk produces a creature that smells terrible but couldn't give a hoot. <laughs> I love that. Kareem, America is mental. Trump refers to journalists at press conference every night as fake news. Nasty questions. Never answer anything put to him. Now, Georgia want to sue China. Yes, I don't understand Mr. Trump with the press because it's not wise, no matter who you are or who you think you are, um, you know, he is the President of the United States, but it's never wise to make an enemy of the media. And when I was at my very hottest height, um, the first time, and will be again, um, you know, the media were after me all the time for, what do you think of this, a quote on this, a quote on that, Scotty McClure appearing on national radio. Um, you know, I mean, they even got me on to talk about the football on BBC Radio 4. Um, so that was an interesting conversation, I can tell you. But um, when I was at my hottest height, I, I would say to the media, look, um, I'll give you my numbers. If you want to talk to me, phone me. You know, don't go printing a lot of nonsense and saying Scotty McClure was not available for comment, you know phone me and, and all the rest of it. And when they were hiding in the hedges outside my house, I said, look, if you'd come in, I'd have given you a cup of tea and we could have made the story up together. Uh, the Brigton Bus Museum's great, says God Robinson, is run by enthusiasts and all their buses work. It has open days which are notified on Facebook. Obviously, things will be altered during the virus. Absolutely, Gordon. But that is great news to hear that. I love it. Uh, and um, I think it's the Gordon Sterling will know. The Leyland Arab that has the Gardner engine. Is that right? Was there a Leyland Arab? And it was a decker. It was a double. And the um, Leyland Tiger was the big single-decker. Is that right? Am I right? Dan Leslie's watching. Dinky you do, Dan. Lovely to have you with us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come and join us. More sharing, everybody. Come on. This is a piece of nonsense. So there we are. There should be thousands joining us. 
I used to pop up on this platform and thousands joined me right away. But I'm just wondering, as I say, that was years ago and there's so much more media uh, and therefore I'm getting less of a slice of the cake. I think that's what's happening, guys. Um, so, but obviously at first you think, am I getting less popular? Because no, 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 no. Scotty McLean will always be popular. There we are. As I say, you may not like me as long as you love me. Yes? Do you get that? I'm sharing to another page, guys. Now I'm going to share to a group. Get this sharing going out here. Uh, I remember you, Scott FM, 25 years ago, and Lanarkshire Radio, L107, yep. Uh, entered a fitting window competition. I've smashed it. Oh, very, very good. Excellent. Um, I hope you guys don't mind, but I've just signed a six-month contract um, with one of the big television providers. So good news there. If I don't pay, they'll take the set back. It's uh, separate. Every type of buses, Bristol, AEC, Daimler Leyland, and a chat from one from David McBrain. Oh, they were great. Yes, that's right. The smokers were upstairs. Yes, that's right. Upstairs we were smoking. That's like the, the old Glasgow one. I maybe told you this one bit. The guy gets on the double decker and uh, he says to the driver, Are you in the tune? And he said, yes, downstairs only. He goes, where's your top bit going? Ha! All that. Another old Scottish one. You'll get this. Some of the older people will get this one right away. Guy says, are you going into Gorbel's Cross? He went, no, no, son, no. And he says, ah, oh, it says Gorbel's Cross on the front. He says, it says India and the tires, but I'm not going there either. So there you go. That's my dog actually out of his bed, wagging his tail, waiting for a treat. I've got an extremely lazy collie who loves his sleep when he should love his sheep. <laughs> I think I may have had you as a radio lecturer. I hope I was a good student. I've learned a great deal from a great teacher. I've learned from a great teacher. Tony Mack, I think you were in the class, weren't you? When I came to deliver the lectures on radio, yes. Wonderful. Oh, no, Scotty, I'm going to a wedding just after Christmas. Well, you might be joining it virtually online. Scotty McClure, I will guess and say Ayrshire or even up north. Uh, no, Kareem, was I born in Scotland? That's question one. Uh, what do you call a cat that ate a duck? A duck-filled fatty puss. Stop! Uh, Gemma says, I'll have a guess. Ayrshire or up north? Well, there we are. I guess Hamilton, says Margaret Sheldon. Hamilton in Scotland? Or where else have we got Hamilton? Have we got Hamilton in Canada? Do we have a Hamilton in America? Do we have a Hamilton in Australia and New Zealand? I don't know. Worth checking all these things out. Peter Conley. Shamsur Raymond Katak is watching. Shamsur Raymond Katak, lovely to have you with us again. Dinky Dusa. There we are. Wonderful stuff. Now, um, what else? Sharing. Here we go. You distract me, you guys, and I can't get sharing. We need to get sharing. And tell everybody about the program. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. Because if they all set the notifications, let me know when Scotty McClue goes live. Then we'll get that. Susan Forrest, you've got a new listener, my seven-week-old grandson. Hello! So there we go. Scotty McClue, are there any breeds of dog that you would have liked to have had? I think for me, a Great Dane or a Mexican hairless dog. Uh, Scotty, London Way, you were born, says Kareem. Very interesting, Kareem. Now, on the dogs, I can't remember where the poem comes from or what it is or the piece of prose, maybe. You can't live in all the houses. You can't drive all the cars. You can't do all the jobs. You know, and I would like to have had 10 lives. Kevin Stewart says, were you born in Malaya or Singapore? Ah, very interesting, Kevin. You didn't tell me why you think that. Um, so the Great Dean, I've had friends with the Great Dean, a gorgeous character with a lead about that length. 
because he was taller than me. And uh, or he was up beside me. He, he was up to above my waist. And thank goodness he was placid because you just walked along beside him. Gorgeous, gorgeous character. Take a lot of feeding, you know, that sort of thing. Um, the um, elk hounds, the deer hounds, all these wonderful dogs as well. The, I love the Labradors and the Retrievers, though. And I love the wee terriers. Used to have West Highlands. So there you go. Uh, you were born in Scotland, Aberdeen or Inverness? says Gemma and marie McRae. Inverness is the capital of top quality speech. Inverness, everything gets pronounced properly. So there we go. Um, so there we are. Uh, did you hear about the Glasgow North American native Indian? I have to say Tony Mac. Uh, he's called Hawkeye the New. <laughs> Fantastic. So there we go. A North American native Indian would be the the politically correct term. Because I said to a lady I could teach her to speak North American Native Indian in three weeks. And she said, how? I said, see, you're picking it up already. I told that last week before you all start shouting. Shouting at your machines. Here we go. This is going out to Scotty McClure, global radio and television producer. Correct. There we are. And you know I've added to my title of the world's top broadcaster and the first lord of the internet, um, the world's most humble man, just in case anybody thought I was blowing any trumpets, you know. Uh, Andy McMillan's laughing. Excellent. Lovely to have you with us, Andy. <laughs> Andy's got that one right away. He's right in there. You cannot fool him. I knew an another Andy McMillan was... The professor of architecture at Glasgow University and had been a partner in Gillespie, Kidd and Coya and been part of the team that designed a lot of wonderful churches for Scotland, along with Jack Coya. There we are. If people had remembered from previous shows, you have said you were born in Greenock. That's why you're so sweet. It's near the Tate and Lyles Sugar Factory. Yes, uh, the Lyles lived in Greenock, and every day I used to walk past what had been their house. You know, huge big mansion house in Newark Street. Good morning, Scotty. Dinky do, my friend. Stephen McMahon, dinky do. The wonderful Royston Mayor has joined us. Great one. Great one. I worship you. I just wish that uh, you and I could have collaborated a good few years ago because there's a saying within uh, the independent uh, television and radio industries, if Lou Grade had been alive today, Scotty McClure would never be off our television screens. Interesting. And Royston, you'll know exactly what he meant. Uh, were you born in Greenock? They say everyone from Greenock are great swimmers. Always seems to rain. Well, the old comedians used to um, start. I mean, I've been the butt of all this sitting in the audience. And they would come in and they would say, good evening, Glasgow. And they'd go, hey, who's in from Paisley? Oh, we've got the buddies in. Anybody in from uh, from Hamilton? Ah, there you go. Yes, out the middle. How you get on with the electric light and everything? All that stuff. Greenock, don't you bother putting your hands up. I can see your webbed feet from here. <laughs> it does, it buckets. Although having said that, I was brought up in Greenock and I always assumed that it must be the wettest place on the planet. Newsflash, I then moved to Preston in Lancashire. Now they can do rain. Lunchtime, the tide comes in at Blackpool. But... Manchester leaves them all standing, in my experience, to date. Manchester can give you a downpour just like that. And that was why when uh, the Bernsteins, Mr. Cecil and Mr. Sidney, later uh, Lord Bernstein, um, when the Bernsteins set up Granada Television, because they used to run the cinemas, and when they set up Granada Television, they realized that everybody in the terraced houses in Manchester 
would be often staying in for the rain. And uh, there we are. Manchester can also do rain. Oh, Kevin, it can do rain. Uh, Scotty, do you have any nice memories of Mary Hill? I was born there. Stephen McMahon. I lived in Mary Hill for 11 years and loved every second of it. The only thing is my flat looked over the Garriach Road, just below the barracks. And every night somebody would set a trip fan up and the fire brigade were in... Where were the fire brigade now? They were just along the street there. What street were the fire brigade in? Anyway, they weren't far away. It'll come back to me. And uh, they were just along. It wasn't Shakespeare Street. That went up the hill. And this one, Hotspur Street. I think they were just off Hotspur Street, the fire brigade. They were in a wee, a wee street that went down. Somebody will tell me. And um, <laughs> just at the back of what was the old North Kelvin side church, where Tom Allen, the Tell Scotland minister, who sadly died quite young, he was, he'd been the minister there. And the Oban Drive was across on the other side, and you had the petrol station and a wee church that became a pub. Fantastic. So the fire brigade would come round the corner, and because it was a busy junction, full twos and blues were on. You know, and I'm sitting trying to hear reporting Scotland, and they're off up to the chip pan fire in Mary Hill. But yes, a lot of lovely people, the Mary Hill Road, they said you could get anything from a needle to an anchor. So they are, if you look up, if you go onto YouTube, and you look up Scotty McClue, Glasgow boy. Um, got in late, too late with Greenock, says Margaret Sheldon. Yes, Greenock, fantastic. It's to do with the Pennines. Well, I thought you said it's to do with the pennies. It's to do with the Pennines. Yes, the Pennines, the backbone of England. And I think the Pennines, the clouds just hit the Pennines. Bang. Manchester's my second home. My dad's a Mancunian. Ah, oh, right, from Withenshaw. Right, Stephen Men says, I know. He said, your dad, does your dad talk like that then? Uh, Stephen Mulgrew's watching, dinky do. I stayed in Valley Guthrie uh, Street. I stayed in Valley in Guthrie Street. Scotty, love your stories. Stephen McMahon, fantastic, dinky do. More sharing, guys. Do not let these numbers slip. No sharing. I will broadcast till there's... Was it how they start the declaration of a broth? So long as a few of us remain alive. There we are. Well, I'll, I'll keep on broadcasting as long as we possibly can. Wonderful. Um, I'm going to share to a group. Share, share, share. Can everybody share, please? Let everybody know. Shout out to Shari McLaughlin, the best singer in Court Bridge. Absolutely, Thomas Peden. Fantastic. A lot of wonderful singers come from Scotland. Susan Boyle. Remember Susan Boyle that night when she started I Dreamed a Dream? Greenock has some excellent views of the Clyde and views of Dumbarton and Helensburgh. Yes, Kareem, it's wonderful. I had an uncle who lived in Danoon. And he said the best thing about uh, Greenock was looking over at the Argyle Hills. <laughs> I love it. If you see early pictures of Greenock uh, with the fleet in during the war, busy, 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 busy. Remember the first time I went in a plane to Mallorca with a party of 10? On the way back, one of my daft mates who was used to buses started walking up the aisle with a hat asking for money to tip the driver. <laughs> he was on the plane. He wanted money to tip the driver. I love that. You've just reminded me when you said a party of 10. We were talking the other day about the paddle steamer Columba, 1875, and she ran till 1936. And um, she was at the pier at Ardrishig. I think it was the Columba. It might have been one of the others, but I think it was the Columba. And she was at the pier at Ardrishig. And she'd, she'd left the pier. So there we are. So she'd left. She'd given it. Slow us down both. Right? So all that sort of stuff. 
and she was just leaving the pier when the pier master came running down and shouted, Could you hold on for a party of 70? So, for ahead again, both, thank you. Boom, 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 boom. Back into the pier. Shoo, 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 shoo. The big paddler. And the party of 70 was a lady who was aged 70. <laughs> and they put them all back. They thought there were 70 people, maybe in a bus at the pier head or something coming down. Oh, boss, skipper, hello. Could you hold on for a party of 70? <laughs> Old lady, one old lady gets on. Well, she wouldn't be old, 70. Maybe in those days, though. Because that was the days when, as Billy Connolly used to say, you would see ladies with coats and hats that you never saw in the shops. You know, you never saw these coats in the shops. And they would quite often come round for tea and sit with their hat and coat on and maybe their silk scarf and have tea. Into Kelburn Street for the fire station. Robert Rovers, I think you're spot on. Was that just down at the school? There was the wee school there. Was that North Kelvin Side Primary or something like that? Can't you mind? Because North Kelvin Side was up the other side, wasn't it? Uh, so there you are. Kelburn Street, I think you're spot on. And was there a short one? Was there Amy Street or Amos Street? Something like that as well. Dave Anderson. Uh, Sean Philbin's a cracking Irish folk singer does a cracking rendition of the hills around Dunloy, Scotty. Dunloy, or yes, Dunloy. Did you mean to type Dunloy? Uh, Thomas Whedon Lowell, has Erin got something to do with this? There we are. So there we are. Wonderful. Sherry McLaughlin, dinky do. I think you're on to it, Sherry. Uh, Christopher loves watching dinky do. Christopher. Guys, sharing. Stop. More tea. That's what's needed. More tea. The time flies when you're enjoying yourself, doesn't it? Just. Um, they're sharing a group. So we'll get into the Scotty McClure group right now. Yeah, we'll pop that up. Um, and then maybe a couple of the bigger groups just to get it away. As the auctioneer always says, doesn't he? What can we say? £100, £100 just to start me. All right, £80 then, £80 to start me. Okay, £50 to get it away. 40 30 20 10 nobody want it for £10. Pass that. <laughs> I was once in a sale room and nobody wanted a lovely upright piano for £10. And I went along to the next sale, I think it was a couple of weeks later, and the piano sold for £360. And this dealer behind me turns to his mate and goes, How can I go out for a tenner? <laughs> Obviously, kicking himself. Fantastic stuff. And I can also remember being in a sale room. I mean, I was going for wee bits of furniture and things, you know, for the hoose. And uh, I can always remember being in the sale room. And the guy said, um, now we have uh, two little silver spoons there. They're quite early ones, nice ones. Could we say, I mean, they're going to go high. So could we start, somebody start me at um, uh, £100? And everybody went, Whoa, that's high for two teaspoons. For £100, you know, or 50, start at 50, something like that. And, and 100 for them. Two guys are nodding away. £100, yes, for the two silver spoons. They're, they're, they are early, as I say, and they're, they're nice ones. And uh, in advance, £100, £120, sorry, £110, £120, £130, £140, £150, £160, £170, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £180, £ 220, 240, 260, 280. they went for around 600 quid. And I dare to say, I don't think the auctioneer knew what he was selling. And two very swishly dressed characters um, trying to outbid each other on two little silver spoons. And the only other thing I've seen go for 600 quid was a Scotty McClure badge at a charity auction. 
And I think I might have one some other. I'm sure I saw one of these wee branches. Yeah, a wee second. Bear with me. Just till I show you. <laughs> a charity auction. Oh! I'm sure. I've got, I've still got one. That lovely. Scotty McClure, dinky do. Do you like that? So there we are. A wee bit of merch. <laughs> and that went for a charity auction. Uh, somebody says, watch you don't fall on your backside, put them in, you might get nothing for them. £600. And there was another one. Same bidder, £600. It was charity, I hasten to add. And I handed them to the auctioneer just at the end because I used to put them in my pocket of my evening suit and wind posh people up by saying, do you like a wee Scotty McClure badge? And some general would go, oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> just to see the faces. Christopher Love, Scotty, have you ever heard of Chris Kennedy? I have now, yes, yes. Um, Thomas Speedin. Just being truthful, Charmaine. Absolutely, Thomas. You're a you're a man of honour. Will you be clapping for the carers tonight at eight o'clock? I'll definitely be doing that. They are true heroes, yes. And round where I am, we've got a, a wonderful bagpiper who comes out and played my march past the Glenderool Highlanders. Yeah, dee dum dee dee. No, no, sorry, that's not the Glenda Rule Highlanders. Dee dum da dee 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 dee. There you go. Uh, do you know the dog's greeting? He wants his dinner. David Young's watching. David Young, bless you. Lovely to have you with us. Scotty, I remember being totally addicted to your evening show with the women drivers and all that. Absolutely, Stephen McMahon, but I like to tell people that it's not all about that. Now, although it was great fun to get everybody back, we don't have the calls, unfortunately. But give me my phones back and I will sort the lot of you out. I'm telling you. Uh, Scotty McLean, what are your plans for today, Kareem Zachariah? We are at the scrubbing today. I am a scrubber. I'm a wee scrubber. And uh, that kitchen floor is needing a bit of welly. I then have a lot of um, paperwork to do, uh, you know, because um, we've got, uh, I have a big job and uh, I'm providing paperwork for that job. I've always wondered what it means when people talk about the elephant in the room. Do they mean someone is overweight? Tony Mac, you must drop your paranoia. No, the elephant in the room is something that nobody talks about, right? So um, say, for instance, you were sitting in a group of people and um, I'm trying to give you an example. You're sitting in a group of people and everybody had paid £50 to come to the evening, except one person, you know, and it wasn't mentioned. Nobody raised it. They would be the elephant in the room, right? And it just means that there was something massive staring everybody and nobody was referring to it. You know, the elephant in the room. And they talk about Scotland and England, the union. Scotland is in bed with an elephant, you know. And it's the elephant in the room. If there was a meeting um, of uh, the Scottish and the English uh, leadership team and nobody mentioned that Scotland was financing the UK, um, or a good whack of it, that would be the elephant in the room. Do you see what I mean? Did you discuss the fact that we should be hanging on to our own money in Scotland? No, no, nobody. No, that was the elephant in the room, but nobody said anything. In other words, there is something so massive in the room, but people are giving the impression they can't see it. They're blanking it. That's the elephant in the room. Nothing to do with overweight people. There should be a sugar tax for those born with a silver spoon in their gob. Numpty heat. That would, you'd be getting taxed big style. So there you are. You should punt merchandise, Scotty. 
Thomas Speed and absolutely this will all come. There is no rush. Um, well, there's a wee bit of a rush because I think I've only got another 20 years of career work in me and then I'll have to do other things, you see? So, um, you know, from that point of view, there's a rush. But there's no great rush because the problem I've had, as I say, is people with radio stations thinking, oh, no, I couldn't have him shouting and bawling at the audience. Not understanding that that was of its time and that I am an incredibly flexible broadcaster. I mean, I voiceover stuff. I can read news. I can talk to people. I can interview. You know, if you want, if you want a couple of good interviews, put in uh, Scotty McClue talks to David Heyman, the actor, the wonderful actor, and you'll get a super interview. And David was just an outstanding person to talk to. I uh, used to get the 1 a.m. bus from Glasgow to Clyde Bank. After a night out, we'd walk to Dumbarton. One night passing Old Kilpatrick bus station, my mate said, I've got my PSV. I'm going to borrow a bus. We waited. He came back out. He said he couldn't get one started. Could you not get one started, I asked him. No, he said, I couldn't find a balach that goes through Dumbarton. I love that, the two old boys. You know, let's steal a bus home. And um, one of them says, I couldn't find, uh, what was it? He says, I, he came out after a long time. He says, there's not a single 40 in the place. He went, well, take a 38 and we'll jump off at the road end. <laughs> Love all that. Can we get Scotty McLean t-shirts made up? The bonnet is back. Finlay Morris. What a lovely idea. So there you are, Carmen McCusker. I'll tell you what we need. We need somebody with a few quid to invest in Scotty McClue, the brand, and then we need to get everything out there and get chit-chatting because I know that good talk will always be popular. Now, I realised last night, I was looking at some stuff, and I realised that I've now been doing this for either four or five years on Facebook Live. And somebody said it will, if you organically grow on a, a platform like this, it'll eventually go right down to nothing. Because people say, oh, I've been sharing that for years and years and years. He's done very well sort of thing. So that's an idea. So if we had somebody with a few quid that could advertise on the platform, then boom, up there, I tell you. Uh, oh, my goodness, I'm out of time. I worked for an antique dealer for about three years. Best job is something different every day. See you tomorrow, Scotty. See you, Robert Rovers. Campbell Loch, Campbelltown Loch, yes. Da lady, lady, lady. The Glenderool Highlanders. Uh, fantastic. Nicholas Wordsworth is watching. What a fabulous name. Scott McClure, have a good day and speak tomorrow. Dinky doo, dinky room, Karim Zakaria. I once went to hear the wonderful Norman Nicholson, the Cumbrian poet, reciting at Wordsworth's cottage in Cockermouth. Then I got to uh, meet him and chat with him afterwards. What a fabulous man. Uh, he's some man, ah. There's a hole in my bucket, dear Scotty, not to heed. Roberta White's watching Billy Hunter. Scotty, always a pleasure and an education. You can be my adopted radio dad. See you later, dad. God bless. Cy Jack's watching. What a top man. Cy Jack, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the wonderful, wonderful work that you've done for television and the media over the years. So much appreciated. Top man. Thank you, Scotty. Dinky do, Gemma. See you tomorrow, Scotty. Been a great hour once again. See you tomorrow, Mr. Margaret Shelton. Pleasure again. All the rest of it. Guys, love you lots. Thank you very much. Stay home. Stay safe. Stay fabulous. And share all this. God willing, weather permitting, we'll all get together at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning for another fabulous Dinky do, Scotty McClure.